This morning's message is called Good Kind of Corona. Since I was looking at the age of some of our accompanists today, they remember that from the 70s, but that's not the kind of corona I'm talking about today. <laughs> corona being the Spanish word or the Latin word for crown. That kind of corona, a crown. That's why the kind of corona that I think we need to, the bad kind of corona, is the corona that has held us captive since March of 2020, the coronavirus. It got its name because it has all spiky proteins and looks like a crown. Little did we know how much authority we would give to that crowned thing that takes a m microscope to look at. We have been under that crown for a couple, three years. I guess that's the point of this morning's message is to get back and take back a crown for us. I'm not a name it and claim it kind of preacher. I don't think you can, you know, as, as some folks say that you... You know, Lord, you own the cattle on a thousand hills, so this is mine, or, or whatever. Yet, on the other hand, I think as Methodists, and so I'm kind of talking to a Methodist audience here, I don't think we claim enough of our scripture. I mean, partly, it's the reason why we're going to be voting on March the 8th, is because we have leadership that tells us we can't believe our scripture, that it's open to reinterpretation. But that's another sermon for another time. But that part of, we've grown up in this church, right? It's been our church since 1968. We've been on this road of disbelief where we can't believe our scriptures. Did I ever tell you why I went to Southern Money, I mean Southern Methodist University? I was trying to go to a conservative seminary. And it's funny how, you know, just as God can use a donkey to speak to a prophet, in this case it was a donkey, it was a, it was a Presbyterian pastor, because I grew up Presbyterian, and I didn't even know what flavor it was when I finally got saved. I didn't get saved till I was 30. And then I thought, what flavor am I? God's calling me to ministry, and I don't even know what flavor I am. So I went and looked at the Presbyterian Seminary up the road in Austin. They clearly didn't know who Jesus was up there. So I said, I guess I'm not going here. But the, the pastor that took me from the little church where we were living down in Calvert, Texas, he said, David, I know you want to go to a conservative seminary. And he could say, and by extension, I know that means my, my seminary is ruled out, <laughs> Austin Presbyterian. He said, but, you know, if you go to a liberal seminary, you will spend three years fighting for what you believe. And in the process of fighting for what you believe, not only will you, you already know what you believe. And if you go to a conservative seminary, they're just going to tell you what you already believe. But if you have to fight for it. Not only will you know what you believe, but after fighting for it, you will know why you believe what you believe. And man, did I hate that. That felt like God going like this to my ear, you know, like you do when your kid's not paying attention. And I thought, man, that guy just spoke. He was used of the Lord to speak to me. So I applied to Southern Money, and God confirmed it with other signs and miracles which was money, because Glenda and I had none, and, um, and, and there we went. I say that because the very first day in Bible class, they said, if you can come up with a new heresy, you get to graduate with your MDiv today. Imagine a seminary inviting heresy. But they were making a point, and the point is this. Every heresy that can ever be humanly thought of has already been tried. There's nothing new under the sun. 
And they all boil back to the first heresy, which was in Satan told our earthly, first earthly parents, ye shall be as God. And every heresy grows out of that soil of us trying to be God, okay? And I thought, oh, that's not fair. That was a trick question because I really wanted to get my MDiv and go on with my life. I was going to think of a new heresy. But I've just told you this first heresy because, you know, like everything Satan says, we wouldn't listen to it if there wasn't just a little grain of truth to it, right? He gives us just enough truth that we can't spot all the garbage that's wrapped around it. What he was trying to get us to give up is this crown that's offered back to the church in Revelation 2. When God opened my eyes to this particular verse in Revelation 2 that we read today, I, I mean, I, I had to stop and say, what? what did I just read? He said to the church of Thyatira, and I never say that word the same twice, by the way, in case you're wondering. Sometimes the R moves in front of the Y and back and forth, so <laughs> it's not your hearing. You don't need to adjust your set. <laughs> He said to the church there, for those of you, so okay, remember there's a discriminator there. It's not the entire church of Thyatira. It's just those who have rejected a teaching on sexual immorality. That's what they are having to, in that town of Thyatira, there's someone saying it's okay if we throw out all the old standards of sexual purity. Anybody heard that before? Those are the ones that aren't getting the crown, the corona, that God's going to then promise to the rest of you. To those of you who are faithful to God's teaching about sexual purity, and, and this isn't homosexuality here. This is heterosexuality that's going on in Thyatira. So I don't think I'm kicking the straw man that we've been kicking for a couple, three years. This is, as I've always said, a bigger threat to the church. You know, that when people in Methodist churches let their kids go to college and then they, they say, oh, well, yeah, I know they're sleeping with their boyfriend, they're sleeping with their girlfriend, but they're in college, what can we do about it? We don't, you know, anyhow, that's a whole other sermon. But that's a much bigger threat. Or, as I've had in every church I've ever gone to, I won't, I won't, I haven't, I haven't scratched the surface here much, so don't think I'm talking about somebody in Uvalde in our leadership, but every other church, eventually they would come up to me after a message like this and say, and this, they, this would be a senior citizen, this would be someone with more gray hair than I have, and they would say, well, you know, me and my partner, we're not married, and I'm like, ah, how'd you get in church leadership? Well, because as Methodist churches, we, we don't really toe the line on purity, and we just think, well, at least it's a woman. Or, you know, at least it's a man. You know, come on. At least they got different plumbing. <laughs> but we don't bother to say, how come you guys don't wear a ring? Oh, well, we're not married. I, you know, so anyhow, that happens enough to discredit our walk. To the rest of you. To the rest of you, for those of you who know, for the remnant, an awesome promise is coming. A powerful promise. One that if, let me first say, you know, I expect we are in the last days. So I don't think we're going to get this very revival that I'm promising you or that I'm going to talk about next. But in case I'm wrong, and I've been wrong before, right, Glenda? Yeah. <laughs> in case I'm wrong, if I'm ever going to be proven wrong on this particular subject, someone is going to have to grab this promise in Revelation 2. It's going to have to grab this power in Revelation 2. And what is this power? To the rest of you, I will give... 
This is Jesus speaking. Go back and see how the first, that chapter of Revelation starts. In Revelation 2, it is clearly Jesus Christ speaking. It's named. It's not the angel of Yahweh. And not, no, it's Jesus Christ talking. And he says to the church there in Thyatira, well, to part of the church, to the rest of you, if you will tarry faithfully to the end, I will give you, and then what does he give them? All the promises that was given to the Messiah in, Revela or in um, Psalms 2. Kiss the son, and you know, today you are my son, today I have become your father, and go back in that. That's Yahweh speaking. That's why that particular psalm gets translated differently in Jewish Bibles, because it's so Christian, they can't stand it. It unseats their, Yahweh can't have a son. The Muslims say, Allah has no son. We're the only religion that says, the supreme God has a son. Today, you are my son, and I have become your father. And then, because of that, I will place in your hand, this is the father, we're getting to overhear a conversation between the father and the son. I will give you an iron scepter, an iron police baton. I, I always put it in redneck terms. I'll give you a big old piece of rebar, and you're going to smash all the other kingdoms like pottery. You're going to go crazy. That promise that's mentioned three times in the book of Revelation, it's that psalm is that crucial. Because remember, that's the only explicit mention of Yahweh having a son in the entire Old Testament. In Revelation 2, he says, to the remaining part of the church of Thyatira, that promise given to me, I give to you. Okay, now in a minute, I'm going to say you, and I want you to say I. You. Okay, because you know what? Someone's going to have to grab that. And they're going to have to go and stand in front of, it might be the city council. It might be the state government. It might be D.C. It might be the U.N. But if the end of days is not going to happen on your and my watch, it's because some believer somewhere grabbed the authority in Revelation 2 given to the church in Thyatira, and they smashed First thing they're going to smash is the current corona that holds us. We're going to have to break free again. We're going to have to get a church that can mingle again. They can, and he, as you already know, I'm not a hugger. But, I mean, we've got to be able to hug again, right? <laughs> we've got to give a holy kiss like it says in the Bible. You're going to have to work on me for that. But anyhow, this is, this is the thing that's got to come back, and we've got to be able to stand in line again without little blue footprints at, at restaurants and post office. I mean, education is held by this bondage of corona. We've got to smash that thing wherever we are. We've got to get it back, and, and, and mainly it's because we've got to get back our thinking. It's the thinking that really holds us captive, right? I mean... Yeah, I could go on and on about all the places we're captive in our thinking, but that's where it is. And Jesus says to someone here, because Jesus always uses the church, right? We are his hands and feet. I think we sang something like that in one of the songs this morning. Someone, and maybe it's as a culture, but at a minimum, someone will rise up and smash the false teachings, false governments, that smash the kingdoms of the world. This thing, that because they're all kind of in league together, right? At the height of it in, in 2021, it didn't matter where you traveled in the world. The corona had, you couldn't cross borders, you couldn't get letters, you couldn't get your kid back home. You couldn't get off a cruise ship. I mean, man, it was amazing. And as, the, as he says to Thyatira, and he speaks into our time, I will give to the one that perseveres the same authority given to me in Psalm 2. Let that sink in. The same authority, go back and read that Revelation 2 passage, the same authority to smash kingdoms that I have as the Lord of Lord and the kings of kings, I will give to the one that perseveres. 
if we're going to get free, someone has to step up. And I, I say that, I mean, it is the church, as we're going to have to be a culture of getting used to standing in front of things that we know are in captivity and smash it. But I also want to say, my reading of history, somebody steps out of nothing. You know, think about the prophets, Amos, the shepherd, whose word read, man, when he was chasing little sheep, nobody knew Amos. And now he's in every single piece of scripture in every language all over the world. People step out of obscurity into world leadership. That's the very nature of serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I know you Valdez had some leaders come out of here, right? Yeah. Right? I mean, I've had to get some history lessons lately. You know, people have been schooling me. I was like, that is amazing. Why should we not, you know, we, we say lightning never strikes twice, but that's not in the Bible. You know, we, who knew where you Valdez was before May 24th, right? And now I get sympathy cards from Uganda, from a guy I baptized in Iraq, who was a mercenary in Iraq, from Uganda, and now I get sympathy cards from him. I'm like, I never expected Uganda to feel sorry for me. Everybody knows who we are. Why wouldn't this be the place where the promises of Psalm 2 and Revelation 2 come out of it, come out of this soil? Come out of a broken people, and a people who say, no, that's enough. I'm not going to be anything. I want my crown. I want God's crown. And Jesus says, I will give it to you if you will persevere. So do not become discouraged. Do not become tired. Don't get drawn into the world, but say, you know, Lord, I'm not worthy, but you are, and I'm willing to wield that power because I want my town back. I want my culture back. I want my world back. I want to be able to watch TV again. <laughs> I used to like commercials. You know, I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want all that back. I want it to be simple. I want my daughters to be able to walk the streets at night without fear. I'm, I'm tired of going out before I go to bed, especially when it's cold and I go out and make sure my doors are locked on my truck. You know, and I got an old truck. Nobody should be breaking into that thing. I want it all back. Well, that's the good kind of corona, and it is promised to you and me. Can we believe God for it? Let us pray. Lord, why would you share your crown with us? And all you say, we just have to persevere. And persevere is just a fancy word for keep doing the right stuff. Keep doing the things we were taught in Sunday school. The simplest part of Christianity, following the things that are in that book. And for that, you would give us the ability to smash unjust kingdoms. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, we want to believe you. We want to walk. We will claim these things because we want you to be king again. We ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.